everybody, welcome to Attack of the Show. Let's talk MySpace, all right? Is it a fun, carefree social network or a haven for pedophiles and freaks? Well, either way, they're not taking any chances. Plus, snakes on a mother effing plane. Yeah, the director went back to reshoot some stuff, and we're going to let you know exactly how much sweeter it's all going to be. And grab your swing line stapler and turn your radio to a reasonable volume. Because Office Space star Steven Root is here. All this, plus reviews of Mission Impossible and Wolf Creek on DVD, today's top news, and a little pre-Easter visit from our very own Office Jesus. Now, uh, <clears throat> bow your heads, please, and prepare for Attack of the Show. Think about this. Please, please, please. And for the next hour or so, I'll be playing the part of Kevin Pereira. And I'll be playing the part of Olivia Munn. You're really good at it. Thanks. You are really yeah, good I've at it, by the way. Yeah, I've had a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. Method. Method actor. Uh, you, yesterday, we were talking about the MySpace, yes. the social networking site. You looked right into the camera, uh -huh. and you lied to everybody and said, oh, I'm going to join. So when are we going to see the old MySpace? Uh, I'm on MySpace, oh. and you helped me. So oh, that's right. That's that right. whole fake, when are you going to be on there, didn't really work. I'm in your top eight. <laughs> I love MySpace. Love my space. Already addicted? I love it. I was on till 2 o'clock in the morning, and I've made a lot of friends. And... Sweet. Any truckers? Yeah. Uh, no, not okay. yet. I don't think. What's, but, your, uh, what's your address just so they can reach you? MySpace.com slash omun. Omun. Oh, got it. Got yeah. it. All right. Well, MySpace.com is actually back in the news, but this time it's actually for a good reason, my friends. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the barrage of negative press the site has garnered. One paper called MySpace a predator's playground. Now, another claim the site attracted, quote, a tsunami of pedophile predators. Ooh, that's, that's pretty much my profile specifically. <laughs> and another went so far as to announce, quote, warning to young teens, stay out of my space. So in response, the site has begun running a new ad campaign promoting child safety. Yeah, the spots initially are going to be run as banners, one of which reads, quote, one in five kids online is sexually solicited. Mm. Online predators know what they're doing. Do you? Sadly not. I'm going to start a clinic. Write, it, write a little guide for them. Seriously, actually, MySpace, they're not screwing around here, folks. It's a very serious issue. They actually hired their first ever chief security officer. The guy's name is Himanshu Ningam, and he's a former, former federal prosecutor. The guy spent years busting child porn rings and taking on pedophile predator cases for the Justice Department. Yeah, that's right. Be afraid, pervs. Be very afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually love MySpace so much, but I think that's such a great, it's such a great thing to have that. Uh, that's why I'm jumping to Tag World. They don't have the security. <laughs> All right, and now more breaking developments in our own ongoing series, Snakes on a Plane, an Attack of the Show investigation. A few weeks back, we came to you with the stunning news that the director of the instant classic Snakes on a Plane had begun reshooting some scenes. The intention was to appease the already huge fan base by bumping up the action from a PG-13 to a much more satisfying R. Well, the horror film site BloodyDisgusting.com has some details about what exactly has been added to the mix. All right, here's what we know so far. The deaths are going to be more violent and graphic. Yes. There's going to be more nudity with mm. a couple trying to, of course, join the Mile High Club. With snakes. Cue Kevin. The language will also be more explicit. F&A. And the CG snakes will be spruced up to look photorealistic like you and I do right now. Aww. Yeah. And all of these changes were okayed by the president of New Line Cinema himself. Oh, good old Steve. Good old Steve. I don't know if that's his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think it might be Toby. Oh. All right, if you are keeping track, and we know you are, there are only 128 days left before Snakes on a Plane premieres on August 18th. That's it for another edition of Snakes on a Plane, an Attack of the Show investigation. I love our in-depth journalism. And finally, last night, ABC kicked off Holy Week, which is the stretch run before Easter, with part one of the new miniseries, The Ten Commandments. Now, look, we here at Attack of the Show, we hate to point out glaring inconsistencies, but one look at the old ABC lineup for the rest of the week, and it's obvious that honoring the commandments, 
it's just not a priority for these folks. For example, we have proof. Those deceitful islanders on Lost are constantly bearing false witness against their neighbors. I'm sorry, I keep warning them. And wife swap? Hello? Talk about failing to honor thy mother and father. And nobody, nobody covets their neighbor's goods like the folks on Extreme Home Makeover. Yeah, you know, or Extreme Makeover Home Edition. There's 10,000 of them, and they're all evil. But it's desperate housewives that nabs the express ticket to hell. I'm serious. On a single episode, you've got adultery, the coveting of a neighbor's mm. wife, mm -mm. the honoring of false gods like mm. money and status, the taking of the Lord's name in vain, Olivia, killing, stealing, and since it's on Sunday nights, failure to keep holy on the Sabbath. For shame, ABC. For shame. You make a great argument. Thank you. All right, since this is Holy Week and it is a big deal, we thought it'd be a perfect time to revisit an old friend. Oh, hello there. Office Jesus here. This week is Holy Week for many Judeo-Christian faiths. There's a lot of ceremonies and chanting and praying and blah, blah, blah. To be honest, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I have to answer prayers and do miracles and all that. The great thing is, thanks to California's anti-discrimination laws, I get to take the whole week off from work. And I still get paid. In Bahama Mamas. Mmm. Oh, do you want me to conjure you one? Hey Jesus, where'd you get that donut? I summoned it. Which, could you summon me one? I could. Oh, that OJ. Jesus will be gracing us with more from Wild on Holy Week, as well as his best of material later on in the show. Plenty more Office Jesus. Now, we only scratched the surface yesterday, so today we're taking more of your questions about Olivia Munn. Mm. Seriously, find out what makes her tick. I thought it was a hamster on a wheel. It's not. There's more. You can email us through our web form at attackoftheshow.com slash ask us and chat with us in our IRC chat room as well. Just go to chat.g4tv.com. All right, coming up after the break, Katie Holmes may have agreed to keep quiet, but our DVD expert Chris Gore makes no such promises. We've got his review of Mission Impossible, the collector's edition, right after this. Attack of the show, baby. Attack. Oh, hi. Now, this week's newest DVDs reviewed, it's a little something we call DV Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Chris Gore, how you doing, friend? I'm back. I'm back. I'm here to stay. I, here listen, I, I have never done the DVD Dues Day, I don't believe. I, I, I don't think I have. Well, and uh, as such, I hope you'll... you'll uh... I'll go easy on you. I'll go good. easy on you. Just let's take okay, it easy. All good. right. Let's put a little spit on Mission Impossible Special Collector's Edition. Now, of course, uh, this is timed with the upcoming release of Mission Impossible 3. In fact, I would say one of the best parts of the disc is the free coupon. Hello. It'll save you 12 bucks when you go see MI3. If you go see yeah, MI3, exactly. by the way. Now, uh, the Mission Impossible films, they're a lot of fun. They're great. Tom Cruise kicking some butt, international spy. Um, there are a lot of good extras on this disc. I was actually pleasantly surprised. Well, it's a special oh, edition. It better yeah, have something special. Better have some good stuff. I mean, there's no commentary on it. But there is there is some good behind the scenes on the stunts. Tom Cruise, I found out, actually does his own stunts. Wow. There's a there's a little taste, a little teaser for Mission Impossible 3. One of the best special features on this disc actually is a tour of the real International Spy Museum. So you actually get to see the real devices that actual spies used, including disguises, and uh, there's there's actually an umbrella that injects and kills people that was used. That's this awesome. Stuff. And then uh, one of the coolest things were uh, bugs. There's a lot of bugs play a big part in the spy uh, world, and they're bugs with actual that was put in fake dog poop. 
And oh. this, this was in the Inter International Spy Museum, but the, uh, plenty there, of extras on this. Is there like an additional audio track that's completely silent in case you're giving birth and you're Katie Holmes? Or, no, 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 no that, okay. that's not that's not in there. Because that would that would make it a buy it for me. But what's your verdict? Well, the, the verdict is the thing is without the commentary, without all this stuff, it's a rent. It's a solid rent. It's a solid check it out until the inevitable. Uh, box set comes out with all three movies. Right, it's coming very it's soon. It's coming, all right. definitely. So we're renting Mission Impossible. Now yes. what about Wolf Creek, a movie I've never even heard of, unrated version? Okay, now Wolf Creek, it was one of those that did kind of come and go. It, it played at Sundance and it's it's uh, an Australian film about a bunch of people going out into the outback and um, something oh, happens, something bad happens. Ah. They run into... A Bloomin' they, Onion? They, well, no, they run into some bad people as their car breaks down and then the movie devolves into what effectively is a torture film. I mean, this is... This nice. is this is a snuff movie and it's not fun to watch and it's uh, one of those things. So where no happy ending. No happy ending. I mean, it's 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 actually not pleasant to sit here and watch women get tortured and tied up and and, and <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, oh, you're Chris, laughing now, you're but, good. but but, but I, defy, I defy you to watch the film. The one thing is that, that totally ruined it for me is the commentary on the DVD, where sometimes a good commentary can save a bad movie. This movie, the commentary, the director goes on, well, this great scene where they were learning about camping, that's not a great scene. Right. A great scene is Luke Skywalker getting his hand chopped off at the end of Empire Strikes Back and oh, Darth spoiler. Vader saying he's his father. That's a great scene. There are no great scenes in Wolf Creek. Okay. Yes, there's behind the scenes. There is a commentary track, but this is an awful, awful movie. Wow. Okay. It's awful. But now, so I we, hated it. All right, all right, all right. Settle I down. hated it. Settle down. Settle down. This yeah. is my card. You can't touch it. The yeah. question is, bad movie, but does it make a good DVD? What's your recommendation? I will say this. Blair, if you don't mind my borrowing it, oh. burn it. Oh. Burn it. Poach it on the this butler. Is, yeah, it's, it's not only a pass. You should burn this DVD. Do not see it. It's not fun. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Now, something I've always wanted to do uh, yeah. is a little thing that you call the rapid fire. Uh, uh, tell me about this here. It. You've got 45 seconds, apparently, and is we're going to Is that go... all I get? Well, look at that thing. Oh, yeah. We've souped it up. This is up. Okay. Right. This is like a... Oh, Let's go. This is like a level three uh, need for speed car. All right. Are we ready? We've got 45 seconds on the clock. On the clock. Right in there. And three, two, one. Gore it. Cool. We got we got the Masters of Horror series. If you did not see these when they were on Showtime, definitely check them out. Uh, set from Anchor Bay, awesome stuff. John Carpenter, you got to see it. That's great. Then you've got you've got uh, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. If you've not seen this thing, it's not Office Jesus. Thirty it's seconds, Jesus, Chris. Back from the Dead uh, with Kung Fu fighting vampires. It's okay, awesome. Okay, sold. Twenty-five. Of course, then we've got Babylon Five. Why do we have it? I, not for me. No, okay. Not so much. You better Christopher okay. it, buddy. Funny Ha Ha is a romantic comedy that's about real people you know. It was got a theatrical release. Worth seeing. Checking out. Uh, Tripping the Rift. I love this thing. The best CGI hot chicks in the universe. Dr. Rude and on really the show today. smart, funny. Ten smart, seconds. Funny. Ten uh, seconds. Uh, you, go. Uh, get rich or die trying. I wish I could see the documentary on this, but this film not Four, so much. Uh, three, rock and Roll Frankenstein. Lots two, of fun over there. I already one, watched the news. Nine, I don't need this. No, that's it. You are done. Uh, you are done. Uh, I'm taking uh, a souped-up, drifty little box thing and putting it over here. Chris, right. excellent job, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, for coming on. That was fun. Hey, everybody, for more movie news and reviews, visit filmthreat.com or chrisgore.com slash org.net, whatever. He's got a thousand sites. Still ahead, though, everybody, all the news you actually give a crap about in the feed. Plus, Bluetooth headsets. Do they confuse you? Hmm? Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll let you know which ones are worth cramming into your ear canal, and it's all coming up next. I'm good. <laughs> Did you hit your face? <laughs> now when I have questions about gadgets and technology, I ask one man and one man alone. And that man is Will O'Neill. Will. Pleasure to have man? you here, sir. Nice to see you again. Good to see you as well. Cool, cool. Now, if you still think Bluetooth is a Muppet, then count yourself lucky. <laughs> I'm reviewing Bluetooth headsets in today's product prom. Depending on who you talk to, Bluetooth headsets are either the strict domain of the hip and technologically savvy, or they're a badge of dishonor for nerds. Either way you look at it, though, they're here to stay. So today, we have several for you to look at. Just the other day, I was waiting at a light when a guy pulled over and asked me what kind of Bluetooth headset I was wearing. It was the Jabra JX10. In addition to being mad stylish, the JX10 is an awesome headset. The sound quality is great and it supports voice dialing as well as last number redialing. Expect about six hours of talk time from the JX10. While it's plenty cool, the JX10 can be difficult to pair with your phone. That's not enough, it's super expensive. We're talking $180.
As it stands, the Bluetooth headset scene is dominated by obnoxious businessmen in cheap suits, but not so fast. With the entry-level BT-160, Jabra hopes to expand the reach of Bluetooth headsets into the youth market. The BT-160 ships with 33 designs that you can use to customize your headset. Of course, it also supports voice dialing and last number redialing. If that's not enough, the BT-160 will give you about 8 hours of talk time. The entry-level Jabra BT-160 will set you back about 60 bucks. Plantronics isn't new to personal audio. Hell, according to them, the moon landing wouldn't have happened without their technology. But I digress. The Discovery 640 is a unique device that not only has great audio quality, but it uses your cell phone's charger. This means that when you're traveling, you won't have to schlep around another one. Of course, it doesn't work with all cell phone chargers. That said, the Discovery 640 ships with a AAA battery charger, which would give you a whopping 15 hours of total talk time. Look to drop about 150 bucks on the Discovery 640. Every product Sony Ericsson makes is hot, and that holds true for their HBH610A Bluetooth headset. Not only is the Sony Ericsson HBH610A Bluetooth headset sleek and sexy, but it offers a snug fit and can be worn on either ear. Thankfully, the HBH610A is affordable at 80 bucks. All right, yeah. I know you're not cool anymore unless you have a Bluetooth headset, right? Yeah. Well, if you're a black guy, you wear a Bluetooth headset, then you're cool. Oh. But if you're a white guy and you wear one, then I think it's kind of nerdy. Look, dude, when I'm cruising the, the aisles at Albertsons and I'm talking to my mom about how to make pasta and but what you're I really black, need, aren't that's you? well, deep down, of okay. course, but we don't. We don't talk about that. Uh, what would we pick? We picked the uh, the Jabra. Yeah, the JX10. It's really expensive. It's like 170 bucks, but it's really small. This and and the audio, tiny. Yeah, the audio quality is really good on that. I dig it. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, being so small, mm -hmm. I mean, you normally they have like a boom mic that goes to where, you know, sort and, of where nah, your mouth is. And that's so not cool. Picks it up with no problem? It picks it up, yeah. I mean, people can still tell that you're on a headset, sure. but they can still hear what you're saying. I mean, and especially if they're talking to you, then they don't really need to know what you're saying. They don't, they don't really care. Yeah. They just mm -hmm. tune me out. Pretty Thanks much. Everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, talk cool. time is it. good. And what about the price? What are we paying? Yeah, it's 170 Talk time, I got about six hours, six, seven hours out of it. Really good? Yeah, awesome. it's pretty cool. I dig it. Well, there you have it, sir. You Give can look back. cool. I don't want to look like a, any more of a nerd on this show. Coming up, everybody, today's big news squeezed into a tiny little segment we call the feed. Plus, more internet oddities up for grabs and another round of it came from eBay. But first, in honor of Holy Week, we once again hand things off to the man of the hour, Office Jesus. Office Jesus here, celebrating Holy Week at the beautiful Royal Waikiki Island Resort. Yes, Royal Waikiki, the Tyrant King of Hawaiian Beach Resorts. Was that good, Brett? Great, that's, uh, that's a thousand, right? That's five for the mention, five for the slogan. Fantastic. They've got this uh, great coffee here. It's called Kopi Luwak. The beans are eaten and digested by a jungle cat before they're crapped out cleaned off and brewed. It's $600 a pound, and it is delicious. Way better than the sludge we have at the office. Hey, Brett, how about we get a V-ball game going, huh? No, you are going down, my friend. You're going down to hell. Hey, Jesus, is there any more coffee? Not anymore. Mmm. I don't like cream. How many times have you dressed in leather bondage gear and headed out for the nearest water park? All right, all right. Well, how many times did people bet on it? Hmm? I give you another glimpse of our twisted Japanese game show, Banzai. Each gimp will race against clock down Banzai Waterloo's course. Whichever gimp gets to bottom quickest is the winner. Understand? Good. Gimp number one. He called Tony the gimp. He's civil servant by day and gimp by night. Gimp number two. He the gimp with no name. No one knows where he comes from or what he do. He like a gimp enigma or something. Question is, which gimp will be quicker on Banzai Luge course? The black gimp with no name or red gimp called Tony? <laughs> All right. To find out which gimp takes the prize, tune in to Banzai 
right here at midnight. And you can play along live at g4tv.com and maybe even join the ranks on our weekly leaderboard. Just look at all those proud champions. Look. Once again, it's Bonsai every Tuesday night at midnight as part of our barbed wire biscuit block right here on the G4. Now, we've still got even more Attack of the Show goodness for you in this half hour, so pay attention. Like what, you ask, huh? How about Office Space and News Radio star Steven Root? Hmm? We've also got another chance for you, the viewer, to choose the hottest girl of MySpace. But before all that, I give you Olivia Munn, and she, in turn, will give you the news. That's how the feed works. And now, and now if it's news to you, then it's in the feed. In news that's rocking the music world, rapper Proof was shot and killed. The member of Eminem's D12 crew was gunned down outside a bar on Detroit's famous Eight Mile Road. Proof's real name was Deshaun Hilton, and he was the inspiration for Mackay Pfeiffer's character in Eight Mile. A new photo of Beast from X-Men 3 is now available on the net. Played by Kelsey Grammer, the character is reading a book while hanging upside down from the ceiling in a pose familiar to fans of the X-Men comics. In more chilling news, Robin Williams wants to play the Joker in the upcoming Batman Begins sequel. Williams had originally been considered for the criminal clown prince in Tim Burton's Batman. Instead, the role went to Jack Nicholson. Oh, girls, listen up. International soccer superstar David Beckham could be headed for the United States. Mr. Posh Spice hints that he may sign with a U.S. team after his contract with Real Madrid expires next year. And finally, in a first for the Emmy Awards people, nominations for online and mobile content have just been announced. Major networks, productions like MTV's Stand In and Fox's cell phone series 24 Conspiracy did top the list, but smaller shows like It's Jerry Time also got the nod. We'll find out the winners on April 22nd. All right, guys, that's all you're getting from me. For more on today's top stories, visit g4tv.com slash the feed. You know, if it smells like your uncle and feels like your aunt's weave and looks like your dog's mouth, <laughs> the odds are it came from eBay! I uh, probably should have warned you about that, right? Give me a little heads up. I'm I, uh, excited. I tend to raise the volume. Yeah, online auctions. Online Who auctions? doesn't love them? I surf I love them nightly. Them. I do too. Drunk? Usually, every day. Good, good, good. Well, first up for you, Olivia, a beautiful swan. But not just any swan, no, no. This swan is made of lotto tickets. 1.2 kilograms of lotto tickets, to be exact, thank you. These UK national lottery tickets were cut and folded quite carefully to make up the swanny little pattern. And best of all, the delivery is free. Yeah, this is an example of a treasured British pastime known as uh, insanity. Are any of those winning bids? There's Probably not. It's just paper. I mean, you're, you're taking a chance, but I, they had to be cut and folded. I don't think it'll even accept so it. So it's just fancy origami? Pretty much. Nice. And expensive. Zero bids. The starting price, $348.08. Yeah. All right, guys. We're moving on. Let's heat things up with a bit with the candy bra. Hot. Yes. Seller claims one size fits all, although I don't know how that's possible, and reminds us that the bra is a combination of the perfect pastel colors for Easter, a must for every girl. Uh. Great timing because right now I'm wearing my new fruit leather thong to church on Sunday. Oh, what flavor? It's strawberry. Fantastic. That's yeah. always the best. It is always the, the best. best. I like that because it, it's like I just kind of want to nibble on the shock tarts. You know yeah, what I mean? I, I did already. And the bra. Yeah. I already promised that to Father O'Malley, though. Oh. So. Oh, okay. Well, Sorry I'll take back that. seat. Three bids. Starting bid was, I guess, $11.15? $11.15, yeah. I'll get it for you. Yep. It's a little welcome gift. Would you wear it on the show? I, mm, maybe. All right, fair enough. I'll wear it then. All right, enough of the girly stuff. I got I to gotta move on from this. How about a nice collection of men's magazines, Olivia? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Relax, relax. We're talking. No? We're talking about stuff and FHM uh, and Max and magazines. I like those too. Yeah, but no nudity here. That's the problem. It includes 13 of the British FHMs and Maxims, and the collection weighs in at approximately 100 pounds. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. A lot of magazines. Well, the collection of before he read it was like 996 pounds. I don't know where the extra weight came yeah. from. Odd. But, it, I mean, with a, with a stack of magazines like that, there's like 1,001 boobs. So, I mean, that's a good price. 25 bids, 102 uh, bucks. Kev, 1,001 uh, boobs, that means there's like one boob left over. 
the chick from Total Recall was in one of the issues. Remember her? Hot, right? I do right? remember her. Yeah, yeah, she was good times. All right. Finally, we have the Dolly Berry. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, 1.7 ounces of <laughs> voluptuous southern charm. Uh. Seller claims that Dolly Berry's curves make Mae West look like Kate Moss. <laughs> Dolly Berry, Kevin, is not photographically enhanced in any way. She is all natural. BS. There is, there are no implants. I call Photoshop. There's at least some airbrush going on. Well, we'll see. You could buy it. Beware, though, because, Kevin, if you did want to buy this, the shipping is a bit steep. A seller's asking for $45 to $55 for shipping. Yikes. Yeah, I That's really don't want to get a zucchini from this guy. No, you don't. I'll tell you. No. You don't. Um, not surprising, there is uh, zero bids, ah. and uh, it's only starting at a dollar. Uh, in your price range. Cheaper than the maxims. All right, yeah. um, Olivia, I'd be honored if you'd, if you'd close out the eBay. I really want you to have some fun. I get to do what you yeah, did? please, please do. All right, great. <clears throat> there you have it. Always expect the unexpected when it came from eBay. Wow. Great. Nice. All right. Well done. All right, guys, thanks. <laughs> Once we're done worshiping at the altar of commerce, we're going to critique some girls who fancy themselves the hottest MySpace residents. And actor Steven Root has taken a break from starring in, well, just about everything to join us here live. Stick around, everyone. The Feed is brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Navy, accelerate your life. Actor Steven Root is, not to put too fine a point on it, but the guy's a legend, all right? He starred as an eccentric billionaire on the sitcom news radio. He voices one of Hank Hill's dim-witted buddies on King of the Hill, and he recently stormed the box office in Ice Age, The Meltdown. But despite all this, it took only one name to secure his legendary status, and that name, my friends, is Milton. Milton. Hi. Uh, could you turn that down just... A little bit, but I, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume from 9 to 11. Yeah, no, no, I, I know you're allowed to. I, uh, I was just thinking maybe like a, you know, personal favor. Well, I, 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 I told Bill that if, if Sandra's going to listen to her headphones while she's, while she's falling, then I should be able to listen to the radio while I'm collating. Uh -huh. So I don't see why okay. I should have to turn down the radio because yeah, all right, okay. I enjoy listening at a reasonable volume. Thanks. From 9 to 11. Classic, Stephen. Uh -oh. Thank you for coming on the show, <laughs> Thank man. Thank you. It's, Happy is, to be here. It is a downright honor to have you gracing oh, us with your presence. Man. I mean, I have to say, Office Space, obviously a huge movie, became really a cult hit, you know, years later after it came out. Yeah, really, word of mouth. Really got, word of mouth, yeah. huge following. How's it feel knowing that you've been involved in everything, that you're the busiest <laughs> man, you seem to be in every project, but the one thing that you get stuck with is, is Milton because of a red I never thought stable. that I looked that bad, but I mean, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm recognized on the street, it's mostly for that role. Really? Yeah. And does, does that bother you at all with the, with no, the breadth of work you had? Was no, it like, it's hey, cool but... because everybody, everybody can relate to that guy. I mean, people who've worked, you know, in, in, in offices all over the country, just yeah, soft underbelly of America. Uh, That's sure. what it is. You know? did, uh, did you get any kickbacks from the Swing Line Corp after that? I mean, <laughs> no, they actually wanted me to do that, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to go into you the You didn't want to shill the, the next five years, right? not so much, yeah. You'd have been stuck with it forever. I now, would! Now, Mike Judge, you know, he creates this yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. I know you're, you're, you have a rapport with him. You guys are buddies. Did you, yeah. did you know him before you were approached for this office no, role? No, you know or? what? He, uh, I knew him uh, only from King of the Hill. He, I auditioned for him while I was doing news radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he knew I'd done a lot of bunch of southern plays and a lot played a lot of southern characters. He said, "Come on over and we'll try to do this." So I auditioned for Dale, which didn't work out at right. all. And I said, "No, I can do somebody a lot stupider than that." So uh, I ended up doing Bill. And so, so it wasn't like written for you or anything. You just kind of you no, just came, up came with in it? and came up with something on the phone, and I finished the audition. It was actually in Austin on the phone, <clears throat> and I and I finished the audition and I listened to the voice box right. and says. Well, that's about as funny as that can be. <laughs> I got the job, Classic. so it was good. Do you do you get? I mean, you said you get recognized. You still get stopped on the street. People say people recognize yeah. you. Do they ever just? You have to get asked how many times a day to to do a little Milton. Oh my! Probably I, I would throw gentlemen by the name of Kevin wanted me to come on a G four, and then I did. <laughs> as long as you keep the voice at a reasonable yeah. volume, you're, you're totally allowed to. Reasonable volume. God, I love it. I love it so much. It's right. so weird to do it after about six years. You know, almost everybody can do it better than you can. Do you find yourself like doing yeah. a parody of yeah, yourself? I do. Like, this is what I think it sounds <laughs> well, yeah. like. Yeah, I remember it being something like that. Well, yeah. after the show, I'm going to tie you up for hours doing my my voicemails yes. and my cell phone cell ringtones phone and all this stuff. I do, do a lot, lot of that? cell phones. Yeah. yeah okay. Justin Long made me do his cell phone while we're doing dodgeball. And do, do you, what, do you, what do you come up with? Is it uh, <laughs> someone's someone's calling right now? It's, and, yeah, yeah. And it's at least a five minute bit. I love it. I love it. Well, it has to be. You have to work into it. Got it. So that's the on cam. You're also working behind. 
behind the camera. I mean, mm -hmm. Ice Age 2 made like $314 trillion it in the last two weeks. Billion bucks, I mean, yeah. of course, I saw you pull up two Ferraris. <laughs> One wasn't enough for you, apparently. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer doing the voiceover stuff as opposed to the on-camera? Is there... Yeah, it's, it's two different kind of, uh, two different kind of animals, really. The voiceover stuff is so specific. You know, you got, you're in, uh, you're in the head to do just this one little thing, sure. and, and and even though your body still, you know, you're still act. I'm a character actor, and your body still acts. You're not seeing it, so you have to be even more specific with a voice. But I mean, it's got to be a little sweeter being able to roll in in bunny slippers oh, and, and boxer well, briefs. Well, to do and King of the Hill, we've done 11 years of King of the Hill, so right. I can, you know, you can roll over and do Bill and and Mr. Strickland and all those guys. But if you do say uh, a new voice, I I just did Fox and the Hound too. I'm gonna right. do. Uh, some other projects coming up, so you have to find something for that. It's a little harder. You take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, I take a little. Yeah, well, you just you got to come up with something you haven't done, you know. And I've done a lot of different voices, so it's it's hard to come up with some stuff. I want to I want to ask you about one voice yep. in a show called uh, Tripping the Rift. Yeah. Saw a little clip on the internet ages ago. Was so <laughs> glad they turned it into a series. You play a gentleman, uh, a commander. Chode. Com Commander Chode. Yeah, Chode. Uh, Stephen, could you, what's what's a Chode exactly? I, well, I think I'm familiar. I've Googled it once can, or twice. If you can tilt the camera down all the way to the... Um, oh. I, it's actually a <clears throat> kind of the space between oh. what we don't want to talk about on the air. Not, so it's like the Grendel or the Gooch, yeah. if you will. It's yeah, that whole, the taintal region. Uh -huh. See, I thought it was like a marsupial from, you know, Australia no, or something. No, it's much but, worse than that. I bet it is. Uh, how did, were, you, were you honored and flattered when they said, hey, we want you to play Commander Chode? <laughs> or did you, did you understand the inherent humor of the character name? No, I thought it was great. It was, like you said, it was a five-minute short. And it, you could do, do something totally lascivious. You know, I hadn't been able to do that in voiceover, so it was fun to do. Right. It's an incredible voice, incredible character. Second season is coming out now on a DVD, On DVD, right? yeah. Go, go buy it right now. Any, any plans for more, though? That's what we want to know. You know, I, I don't know whether they're going to end up doing a third season, but if they don't, I think they're headed towards a movie. Oh, good. Good. Well, I hope that happens. I'll show up to see that. Speaking of movies, working with Mike Judge again. Ah, yeah, we got uh, we got Idiocracy coming out. Hopefully in September. I love the premise. Yeah. I love, it's really <laughs> uh, tell, tell me about the the Idiocracy. Well, Idiocracy is basically uh, how dumb the world is getting. This uh, the main character gets uh, flashed into the future 500 years, but the future is so dumbed down <laughs> that he's a genius, becomes president. <laughs> doesn't doesn't sound too far off. No, from, not too far off. All all food on the planet planet is Taco Bell. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there dinner and dancing like there, there was at Demolition Man? Because I hope. Oh, that... uh, always. All there, right. And 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 the most popular movie in America is Ass, and it's just an ass going at it for two hours. So that's the tenor of the that's, movie. That was actually the TV guy descriptor <laughs> for this show. So uh, wait, maybe maybe that's we're a on point. Teaser for you, yeah. Stephen. Thanks for coming. Thank on, you. Man. It was a pleasure Appreciate talking it, man. with you. Thank you. Everybody, you can catch Stephen in Ice Age: The Meltdown in theaters now and Tripping the Rift season two. Of course, it's out on DVD. And hey, we're even giving some away to Chatter. So get your questions in. But stick around. Your chance to vote on the hottest girl of MySpace is coming up. Oh, but first. Let's say we give uh, Office Jesus one last chance to really ring in the Easter stretch run Catholics call Holy Week. Oh, another one? Office Jesus here, celebrating Holy Week as only I can do. You know, this Holy Week is special. Not only is it the last week of Lent before Easter, honoring the day I rose from the dead for the salvation of mankind and employment in a menial office job, but this week also has Passover, the ancient Jewish holiday recounting the struggle to free Israel from the slavery and oppression of Egypt, only to be later oppressed and enslaved by Rome. I mean, I'm not mad or anything, I just, you know, Maybe would have preferred to not have nails driven into my hands and feet. I'm just saying. Good Friday, my ass. As you all know, Elizabeth was in a pretty bad car accident last week. Uh, she's still in the hospital. Uh, we still don't know if she's going to make it, so I thought we should all just take a moment of silence right now. No, I'm in some bull meeting. Chicken wings? Yeah, I can do chicken wings for lunch. All right, I'll meet you outside. Are we done here?
I have a meeting to go to. Rejoining us today by popular demand is the very lovely Christina, our MySpace Girl of the Week. Welcome back, Christina. Thank you. Now, I know you guys at home, you're probably whining about how Natasha actually won the polls, and that's not fair. Eh, to your factory, get over it. Because this is what happens if the winner doesn't come on the show. She gets replaced, and in this case, it's our current MySpace Girl of the Week, Miss Christina. Christina, uh, you have a little bit of Italian in you, I'm told, correct? I do. So you. Half Italian. Mm -hmm. So that half of you hit Natasha over the head with a wrench and dumped her body in the ravine? Or... Did I tell you that? How'd you find that out? We, we're very good on the show. That's what we do. <laughs> Nobody's supposed to know that. Yeah. Foul play? Really? Foul play. You didn't rig, you didn't rig well, any clothes. You just I took wanted, her out. I wanted to come on again. Wow, well, nice. How has the MySpace been going since you've been on? It's been fun. It's, there's been a lot of cool people on there writing me cool messages. A couple so. creepy ones as well. A little, a little bit. A little mm. bit creepy, but Sorry about that. Sorry <laughs> that's about expected. That. It's okay. What's uh, any, any, any hookups? You helping out any of the old yet. fans there, huh? I don't know. This weekend, I'm going to take some time and you really know, maybe meet them. up with some people. I don't know. There we go. You hear that, <laughs> gentlemen? What, sh what's, what's the, what should they use as an opening line? Should they flatter you about your profile or say, you know, damn, girl, you is hot no, with a bunch no, of no. exclamation points? Or... No, I like funny people. Oh, funny people. Yeah. Wow. I'll have a writer work on that for humor. <laughs> uh, Christina, uh, not, not, uh, not that uh, we're so glad that you're here, but there is competition. There always is competition, and her name is Nessie, and I pray she's not from Scotland. Do you want to meet her? I do. Here she Meet is. Her. Ladies and gentlemen, Nessie. Hi, I'm Nessie. I'm 22 years old, and I'm competing to be the next Girl of the Week on Attack of the Show. Welcome. I used to do pageants in the U.S., El Salvador, internationally. I have some of the little tags here that they made us wear. This is in Chinese, and it says Miss El Salvador in Chinese. Piao Ling Hao. I'm just kidding. I totally just made that up. <laughs> This is Chloe. She's really crazy. She's a bangle. So she's not your average cat. She's really vicious. She's pretty violent. <laughs> Ow! Oh, Chloe! Oh, she's so high up my leg. <laughs> I'm a film student, film and TV. Ow! Film and TV production at Chapman. And I'll be graduating in one more semester. A year ago, actually, I um, co wrote a sitcom called The Friendship Hotel. And we produced it and, and everything, and it aired on the Chapman channel. It was pretty exciting. What's up with that? I really like tennis. It's probably one of my favorite sports to play. It helps me get out a lot of aggression to really get on the court and just hit something. <laughs> that was scary for real. All right, that's Nessie. Uh, Christina, you are the MySpace resident expert here. Mm -hmm. What are your chances? What do you think? I don't know. I think they're pretty good. She seems a little bit serious for me. A little too serious for yeah, she's the a little audience, serious. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. The, the pageantry didn't, didn't scare you off? You're not worried? That's what I'm saying. It's She kind of seems a little stiff, a little serious. So Ooh, I don't know. She could, I don't know if she could hang. Someone's talking trash. <laughs> I think it's Christina. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming back, though. Thank you for having Perhaps me. Perhaps we will see you next week. Maybe. Hopefully. Perhaps. Be sure to check out Christina's profile on attackoftheshow.com, and more importantly, be sure to vote. It's a privilege, people, not a right. And if you think you have what it takes to be a MySpace girl on this very show, email us through our MySpace profile at myspace.com slash attack of the show. A lot of MySpace. Stay where you are. Emails and chat questions are in order when we come back. Now it's time for a flash attack, a showcase of the newest and hottest flash games out now. This week, we've got UFO Joe. Use your thrusters to navigate around three planets, but be careful of trees, meteors, and orbiting satellites. Along the way, you can use a tractor beam to abduct natives for your zoo back home. How sweet. Take too many hits, however, and you're toast. It's UFO Joe, and it's out now. Hey everybody, let's see what's going on in that little IRC chat room. You wanna, want a little peeky peek? We're taking questions calm. about you, mm. so, so yeah. pay close attention, Olivia. Mm -hmm. Sneaky Seth asks, what weapon would Olivia use to fight snakes <laughs> on a plane? Snakes on a plane. I would use a samurai sword. Oh, classy. But with a new invention on it, a new spin on it, okay. to get it through security, maybe um, a new one where you could piece it together. You know? You are now on a watch list. Yes, Congratulations. Way <laughs> well, to make travel impossible yeah, for yourself. Won't be flying right. with you anytime no. soon. No, not at all. I could save you. That's true. 
If there mm. were. You don't want to fly with me, but I could save you? Mm. You see, good point. I'm so not creative. There you go. I got to on the plane. Box. She's willing to go. That's All right. true. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> Cutie Pie says, hey, Livia. Who's your favorite X-Men? My favorite X-Men mm. is Cyclops. Um, it, it, you know why? Because um, I actually uh, know him. I actually mm. know him because when I was in Oklahoma, I came from Japan to Oklahoma where I had zero friends. Okay. Mm. Zero friends. Mm. And I made one girlfriend, and her mm. name was Jenny. And she is uh, James Hi. Morrison's little sister, mm. and I met James through, through her. Okay, Done. and uh, there's a flow chart for this? Right. There is. And, then, and he worked in what movie with Kevin Bacon? Mm. That's where we need to get to. <laughs> Auga. I have to think about that, actually. <laughs> you, you don't, don't, yeah. If he ever Augas, just slap him. Give him the old WWE <laughs> okay. back, like the chop to the neck. Yes! That works too. <laughs> wow, that's usually and, extra. And you owe me a dollar. <laughs> Muffin Man wants to know, are you a morning person or a night owl, mm. Miss Olivia? Mm. I'd say I'm both. Really? I, I hate getting up, but I mm. love being up in the morning, mm. and I'm usually um, up watching my TiVo and being on the mm. internet until like 2, 3 mm. in the morning. Nice. Yeah. Way to split the difference. I like that. Yeah. Are you, do you get up? Do you hit the snooze button a thousand times? Oh, I have, I have uh, three alarms set, and, and I hit them mm. all. I get up, bam, bam, bam. and I, I live in a place the size of the coffee table, nice. so I... Uh, I have to like, sleep in a bed that okay. I crawl up to, so I have to crawl down, turn it off, and I crawl back up. And you know you have a job yeah. now. You can actually expand. And get a uh, basic cable. Oh, sorry. oh my sorry. God, I'm sorry. Biker Ben wants to know, what are some of Olivia's pet peeves? What are they, Miss oh, Olivia? My, my, hmm. The biggest pet peeve I have yeah. is... Um, baby talk. I hate. Oh come on, I, little I, Olivia. I, no, 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 that's so. You're saying, I hate it <laughs> when you know girls. When girls, you see the girls with their boyfriends. Yeah. are like, yeah. oh. I don't want you to go. Oh. Mm, I want to yeah. take off my boot and stab her in the eye. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I, can't I hate wait to see it. That. I hate it. What about like what about when you're talking to a dog, like a little puppy? Don't you're you doing wanna, it right well, now. Don't you want to want his little nose and tail? That's cold. That's cold. Okay. No. 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 All right. All right. All right. Moving on. Pied Piper says, Hey, Olivia. Now that you're on the MySpace, how many sexual predators oh. have you found? In other words, how many friends do you have? Right. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know yet because um, I just invite everybody. Mm. And last night I was talking mm. to a few people, guy in South Carolina mm. a little bit. Um, I'm trying to mm. make sure, you know, there's so many. Yeah. And I'm just trying to be friends with everyone. MySpace.com mm. slash o mm. right? Because there are yeah. some imposters. You're, you're, mm. there, there are a couple oh, people yeah. on there pretending to be you. But yeah. That would be you. I have a picture up on is. mine. It is. Yes, <laughs> so it, is. it is. Slash o -mun. Add her. She'll be your friend. But as far as Attack of the Show goes, folks, that's all. All right. Thanks to our guests, Stephen Root, Chris Gore, and MySpace girl, Christina. Woo. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, Olivia. You have a good job. Okay.